Hello, this is Larry Stoll from Pace Turf. Last year, we encountered an interesting problem at a nursery at Hacienda Country Club where Rafael Brajas is superintendent. Rafael sent samples in from an area of his nursery that had been soldered a few months earlier but never really established well. The samples arrived and looked like this. There were tremendous root knot nematode infestation and lots of galls on newly developing roots that prevented the sod from establishing rapidly. I asked Raphael to contact John Marmon at West Coast Turf, the source of the A4 sod, to see if he had ever seen a similar problem and John had not. In an effort to get to the bottom of the problem, John hired Nematodes Inc. to test nematode levels at the sod farm and also at Hacienda Country Club and the results were revealing. This table tells the story. The sod farm did not report any root knot nematodes. However, Healthy Green at Hacienda Country Club reported 570 root knot nematodes per 250 gram sample. That's a pretty low number. The native soil surrounding the nursery reported 128 uh, nematodes per 250 gram sample. Still not bad. The areas that were damaged and showed the intense galling that I showed in the pictures earlier only reported 48 to 102 nematodes per 250 gram sample. Those are pretty low levels. So what's going on? Let's take a look. These low nematode counts would normally not result in intense galling of roots, but the new sod installation where the roots are concentrated at the surface of the soil, uh, a lower nematode count has resulted in dramatic impacts on newly developing roots. Even though the sod was failing due to nematode infestation, the sod was not the source of the infestation. Here's what I think happened, and this is important because a lot of superintendents are resurfacing green using sod, and there is a risk of problems if existing nematode levels are elevated, and they don't even need to be excessively high. I think this, uh, this illustration pretty much tells the story. The short roots represent the area where the new sod was applied. The longer roots illustrate uh, where the existing nursery was uh, located. There was moderate levels of nematodes attacking the roots, and you can see just the few galls represented by the brown dots on the on the longer roots that didn't cause a serious problem. However, when the when the sod was placed on top of an area that was cleared and then the rest those nematodes would still be present in the soil, that little layer of new roots and they're all synchronously developing, so you don't have roots at all different times coming into the soil, were more likely to be infested with the nematodes or be to attacked by the nematodes. Moreover, the less uh, root length that you would have available for the sod uh, makes, means the impact of lower nematode galling on the roots is going to have a higher impact on the plants on the top. The observation that existing moderate nematode populations can cause establishment problems is important as more courses want to take advantage of newer bentgrass varieties. If you already have a moderate level of nematodes in your existing green soils, you need to consider fumigation to drop nematode levels if you want rapid sod establishment. Fumigation options are limited, methyl bromide being available only in limited supplies. However, there is an alternative, Basimid G from Certus, that will significantly reduce nematode population levels in the soil. In addition, it will control weeds and other and diseases. If you're going to take the time and effort to resurface greens, consider a fumigation treatment to reduce diseases, nematodes, and weed populations in the soil. Thank you for watching.